Using the recorder in Power Automate for desktop is a very powerful way to learn a lot of new things when you're starting out with Power Automate. Let me show you how. I want you to open up Power Automate for desktop and do the exercises with me. In that way, you'll learn the most. So click New Flow and then call it Recorder Demo like this. Click Create. The case I prepared for you is here. The link is in the description below. But we want to automate browsers and applications. First browsers. I want to use the recorder to open up Microsoft Edge. Navigate to google.com, search for Microsoft stock price, extract a number, stop the recorder and write the results back to a text file. Let me show you. So I go back here. This is my blank canvas of the current workflow. I hit the record button up here to start the recorder. That will open up the recorder in my other screen. Here it is. To open up a browser, I click the three dots here, launch new browser and choose my browser. Remember to have the browser extension you want to use installed. If you forgot how to install it, click the video up here in the right corner that will take you through the installation process. But I'll choose Microsoft Edge. Here you can see that we have actually opened up a browser. Let me just do it a little bit smaller. Here it is. This is the browser that we want to automate. You can see here we have an action that is launch new web browser and we are navigating to about blank, which is right. We can delete this step by clicking this trash can. We won't. This is fine. Now we want to navigate to google.com. To start recording our actions, you need to click record. Then when you move your mouse here, you can see that things starts turning red. These are UI elements. That is buttons, fields. You can even see here I can automate my windows buttons here in the taskbar. But I want to navigate to google.com. How do I do that? I just replicate what I do as a human. Go up here. Then I navigate to google.com and press enter. That's it. Here you can see that Google have automatically made some steps for us. You can even see that I dragged something in and we'll try to delete it in the end. Now I want to search for something. And again, I'll need to make sure that I'm here. I am now because the cursor is blinking. If you're not, you can just click here. Then I'll start typing. I want to search for Microsoft stock price and then I click enter. Here you can see that we recorded some new steps. That is Microsoft stock price and we go to a web page. This is the number that we want to extract. To extract this number, which can change. For now it's 292.39. You can see it even changed it here. I can right click, extract element value and then I extract the text. By the way, what is the current Microsoft stock price when you watch this video? Let me know in the comments if I've gotten rich if I bought it today. So I will extract element value and choose this one here. Now we're done. You can see that the extracted element that is green dotted lines around it. That is fine. We have done it. We might have created a few more extra steps, but that is fine. We can click finish and check if our automation works. Here are the steps. You can see that these ones here, those ones are comment that starts our auto generated actions using the recorder. And here is the end. So we can easily separate what we have done with the recorder and what we have not. You can of course delete it if you want. Let me try to close the browser and let, let's just see that this works. So if I click run here, that will open up Microsoft Edge. Then I navigate to Google. I will get the price. Let me go back here. We have not decided what we want to do with the price. But as you can see here, we have this flow variables. We'll get back to variables, but we will have it over here. 292.35. That is exactly the number I wanted. And it will even grab when the number changes. We can try running it, running it again. And let's just try to delete this action. This was the drag and drop UI element in window. To delete it, I can click here, then I can click delete or simply just press the delete button. Let's see if it works now. So when I click play, I will navigate to Google, search for Microsoft stock price, get the details and it works again. 
I'm not sure if we extracted the same number, but this will work whatever number the current stock price is at. And again, here might be some double source, which you can easily get rid of. But here I search for Microsoft stock price and then I navigated to this dynamic URL. You can see Microsoft stock price. So this might have been enough. You can easily just tuning it. And now the power comes out and the power was that you can see that we got the extracted element down here. That was an attribute called inner text. And we used an action called get details of elements on web page. If you're new to this program, you would never have figured it out, but the recorder helped you doing so. And we want to save this to a text file that is this number. So to do so, I'll find a write to text file. So I'll search for actions and then I'll say write text to file over here. There you go. Then I need a file path. I want to have it on my desktop. So the easiest thing is that I can either start writing, but I like to do this. So if I go out to my desktop, which is here, I right click, then I'll say new, then I'll say text document. So this is new text document too. I can then shift right click, copy as path and go back, control V, paste it in. I can delete the quotation marks or I should delete them. I can also find it if I click this file selector here but now I will just use this. So what is the text that I want to write? Well, I want to write whatever is in this variable called inner text. So to find this variable, I click this X here, then I choose the inner text like this. I can choose to override, that is fine. And then I click save. Now let me try to run my automation once more. We open up Edge, we navigate to Microsoft stock price, we extract a number, you can see here it's a new number. And if I go back to my text document, we have now written it to it. That was easy. We used the recorder to navigate around web pages, click buttons and extract things. Now let me close this one here and look at the second part of today's exercise. We can also delete all this or create a new flow if you want to save it. I just mark this up here. I press shift. And I go down here, that marks everything. I can press delete. There you go, we have got rid of anything. So let's inspect the case again. Now we want to automate the calculator. This is a very simple application, but the same principle goes when we want to automate more advanced applications. In fact, we can do this technique with all applications. So I go back to Power Automate for desktop. Here again, we will find manual actions with the recorder. So I go over here to actions, then I'll find a run application that is here and drag it in. This one needs some parameters, the application path. You can again click this one here and select the executable or in the calculators, we can just write in calc exe. This is a windows application. This will open up the calculator. This one is it for now. I will click save. So when I run the automation, I click play here. You can see that I open up the calculator. That is fine. I drag it over here and then I hit the recorder and let me drag it in from my other screen because now I want to automate two plus two equals and then I want to extract the result. This could be your CRM system, your payroll system, your ERP system, whatever system you use. This is the technique you can use there as well. So here I click record. Now I'll just hover over to left click with my mouse. Here you can see that I click the button too. Then I'll say plus, I record the steps. I can pass if I want to navigate to another place and do something else, but I won't. I'll just click record again. So two plus two, here two plus two, and I'll say equals, this is four. And now to extract it, what do I think I need to do? Take two seconds before I reveal it. Yes, you need again to right click over here at the result. So I can get here, I right click. Then I can say get name display as four. That is the closest one I get for now. So I will choose that one. Then I click finish. So here is the flow again, same procedure as last year. I press some buttons and then I get details of the UI element in window. Again, you would not have come to this conclusion if you were a newbie. But look what's happened. The recorded things got uh, up here and then the application that is the one that we opened got down here. 
what I want to do is drag this one up here in the beginning since I want to open it and then I want to do these things. Then we close it and let's see if it works. So I hit play. It opens up the calculator. That is fine. 2 plus 2 equals 4. And here you can see that in the attribute value. And the reason that we have it stored the displays for in this name is that if I open up this one here, you can see that the variables produced is attribute value. If I just go in here and I'll say result instead, like this, then I click save, it will be stored in the result. Now it disappeared, but it will get here when we run the automation again. Since we want to display the result, I find a display message and drag it underneath here. Here I will just say the result is, and I will go in here and click the X, choose the result, that one is this one, then I click save. So now I'm presenting the result. Let me close down the calculator and run the automation once more. So two plus two equals four. And here you go. We have now extracted the result and presented it in another system. This is just a simple message box, but you will get it. But now, couldn't it be nicer if we just had the four? Let me just show you a nice trick. It's not really part of the lesson, but it will be a great hack when you proceed your Power Automate for desktop learning. So if I go over here to actions, then I'll search for subtext and we'll use the get subtext. I'll move it down here because now I want to manipulate this result variable. You can see that we have the displays four, but I want to only have the four. So the original text, this is the result variable. So I just click here, choose the result. Here I can choose to start from the character position. That one is fine. I want to start from the four. This is zero indexed. So D is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I want to start at the eleventh position. That is fine. The length that will just be to the end of my string. So I'll just say end of text. That is fine. The result is getting stored in subtext. I'll just store it again in the result. So if I go down here, click the X, I can choose the result and then I can click save. So I'm just taking out the four of this display is four and then I'm presenting it here. So if I again close down, I start the automation, open up the calculator two plus two in a little while equals four. And now we have the results. So this lesson was all about the recorder, but we also saw how we can combine manual actions with the recorder actions. The next lesson in the course is right here for you. Just click the video on the screen.